那最后一个我们就要隆重的请上，呃，最后一个做发言的一个嘉宾就是我们的，呃，阿帕奇基金会的 Chair Craig 先生。Craig 呢，他毕业于哈佛大学，呃，他曾就，他曾经就职于项目司和 Oracle 公司，并且专注于数据库的 API 的设计。他在项目司主导了面向 Java 语言的数据库关系对象的映射，并且把 Java 语言的负责 Java 语言的 GSR。呃，幺二二四三的国际标准，他在二零零七年成为阿帕奇孵化器的 IPMC 和阿帕奇的 member， 从二零一零年起成为阿帕奇的秘书呃秘书处的呃秘呃秘书基金会秘书长，从二零一九年起呢阿帕那个 Craig 成为了这阿帕奇的 chair， 然后我们欢迎阿帕呃 Craig 给我们来介绍 What is 阿帕奇位。
an organization with members, corporate members, and Apache has no corporate members. Apache has a number of communities, but no corporate membership. We have corporate sponsors, but not members. So what we do is um, we provide a neutral space for projects. We're very project oriented. And so what we provide is the, um, is the ability for projects to come and coordinate, collaborate, and create great software without worrying about corporate influence and corporate overlords. So we, we were established in 1999, so guess what? 2019 is 20 years of the Apache Software Foundation, and I'm so happy to be sharing our 20-year success with you. Here's a lot of, a lot of stuff all at once. The, um, this is a, a, a list of most of the Apache software projects. And I say most of because every time we create one of these graphics, another project comes in and, and uh, so now we have one more and now we have to update all the graphics. And so you may notice that um, in the incubator, the incubator is where projects start at Apache and the incubator we just need to update the, uh, the slide there with two, two new projects. API 6 uh, just came in a couple of weeks ago, and our most recent uh, project isn't listed there either. It's the um, uh, Tube MQ. So the next time you see this slide in a future release, you'll have those two new projects on there as well. I'll just point out um, some of the activities when, when I joined Apache in 2005, there were about a thousand committers, and now in 2019, there are over 7,000 committers. So we've had a pretty, pretty significant and pretty steady growth over those 20 years. The first project at Apache was HTTPD. Let's see, how many of you know that you're using HTTPD every day? Anybody? Okay. The rest of you, you are. <laughs> okay. You just don't know it. Um, because over half of the internet is driven by Apache projects. And HTTPD is one of the, one of the first ones. So um, this, uh, this, this project was the beginning back in 1995. And the success of that project, the 21 original members of the project, um, then decided to create a foundation to organize themselves. So here are some things that Apache does. This is a very brief list with over 350 projects. I can't possibly list them all. But we do artificial intelligence, and I think we're sort of leaning away from that term. It's uh, machine learning or deep learning, just to remove it from the prospect of um, the robots taking over the world, which I don't think they're going to, but we really have to be careful. Very careful. Um, we do the Internet of Things. You just heard a little bit about IoTDB and Sharding Sphere, which are all part of the ecosystem that will deliver um, the future of the Internet. We do big data. Of course, Hadoop is a significant part of what makes Apache Apache. If you look at Hadoop and the ecosystem that has been built around Hadoop, it's very, very impressive. We now do financial management, and in fact, one of the projects in financial management is really focused on bringing banking to the unbanked and underbanked people in um, situations where they can't really afford a lot of money in a bank account. They still need banking services. They still need credit. They still need to organize their, their household finances. And um, so the project uh, FINERACT is devoted to um, assisting banks and assisting foundations in providing banking services to these underrepresented people. And what, what modern speech would be complete without a mention of climate change? So I'm a believer in, in climate change. It doesn't matter whether I believe it or not. It exists. We have to worry about it. And there's an Apache project that is 
uh, focused on it. That brings us to what is not an Apache project that you might be interested in bringing something into, a, um, into Apache, the robot apocalypse, which is where the robots take over everything. I'm personally looking forward to this because um, I think I'll be one of the masters of the robots, but um, other people may have a different idea. Autonomous vehicles, we're not quite ready to do that yet. Um, I think the commercial space is pretty well full of autonomous vehicle activity. <coughs> Interplanetary exploration, don't do that. And blockchain, well, forget that. We now have a blockchain project in Apache, and uh, feel free to check that out. It's called Tui, and it's in the incubator, and it's going away, going along. So what does Apache do? Apache provides project governance. So as a member of the, of the board, my main job is to provide oversight over all the 300 plus uh, projects. But each one of them is run independently by its own set of project management um, committee members. So how does the Apache way work? Um, here are some principles. It's not the foundation, but here are some of the things that we believe in. Rough consensus and working code, which basically means that um, if you're working on a project, you put together some code, you propose it, you, you socialize that idea, and it, it should be a small enough piece that it could be rolled back if it encounters some difficulties a little bit down the line. So we don't try to encourage 10,000 line pull requests. Those are a little tough to do unless they've been developed in a branch with full transparency. <clears throat> so um, we believe in contributions from people and almost anything that you do to interact with a project, we consider to be a contribution. So what does that mean? Um, if you send a request or a, a, a message to a mailing list. That's a contribution, assuming it's not spam, assuming that it's actually a, a reasonable thing to comment or to ask. Um, and why do we consider a message sent to a mailing list to be a contribution? It's because um, what the request is might indicate something that you don't understand about the, about the project which might mean that there's a deficiency in the documentation. And if you don't understand something, you ask a question, that's a signal to the developers that maybe the documentation needs to be improved. So it doesn't take the form of you have to file a, 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 a GitHub issue to get your question answered. You just ask the question, it gets answered. So um, if you've been around a project long enough, Sometimes you're the one who will answer the question. And that answer is also a contribution. So these are non-code contributions, but they are very important when you're establishing the community. So we believe community is very important. So that's what we mean. Any constructive contribution allows you to earn merit in the community. Merit doesn't expire. You can come into an Apache project, work on it for a while, then you, you go away, you, you have, uh, have some personal um, things going on in your life, you get married, you have kids, you do move jobs, change. Your merit that you've earned doesn't expire. You can come back to that project later on and you're welcomed as if you never left. So merit doesn't give you authority, although if you have enough merit, you can positively influence the direction of a project. And does anyone know what a BDFL is? We use that term a lot. It's called, it's called benevolent dictator for life. And sometimes projects come in where there's a single person who sort of drives the discussion and drives the direction of the project. That's not the way we do things here. So here are some of the foundational principles that we use to guide the, the foundation project. Um, meritocracy, 
basically means that contributions earn you merit, merit doesn't expire, and you contribute as an individual, doesn't matter who you work for, doesn't matter if you have a job or not. Personally, I don't have a job, except for Apache. That's, that's my job. Um, it's a volunteer job, but it's, it keeps me busy. Um, other people have day jobs, and sometimes their employers pay them to work on Apache projects, and that's perfectly okay with, with Apache. But the fact that you work for some big company doesn't give you any more say in the project. And that's really an important distinction between Apache and some other foundations. We believe in individual merit. And so if you change companies, your merit goes along with you. You don't have to continue to work for the same company to continue to have, have the respect of your peers. Transparency is um, a very important part of why Apache is successful. Um, every discussion, every line of code that's put into the repository, every pull request is done in the open. And it's archived on mailing lists, and it's searchable. If you want to see what is going on with Hadoop, you, you want to say, well, what was Hadoop doing back in, in 2014? Well, you have the ability to go into the mailing list. It's, a, it's an open archive. The discussions are open. You can search them using an Apache tool. It's called list.apache.org. And you can find out all the discussion about any feature that was being discussed at any point in time from when it was started to the present. That's transparency. There's no secret behind the door meetings. Everything is decided in the open. Um, community is the most important part of Apache. So the code is nice. Um, there was a very, very nice quote from Doug Cutting that you saw earlier, that um, if you have bad code in a good community, you can fix it. If you have bad community and good code and bad code, nobody's going to care. That code is going to die. So that said, Apache isn't the best solution for everybody, for everything. So as a result of these principles, what the Apache way has produced over time is vendor neutrality. You don't have any single vendor dictating how the project is going to evolve as a community process. We have diversity. Everybody is free to share their own opinion about almost anything. And that opinion is going to be respected based on who you are. Trust. We have established ourselves as a neutral repository for companies and individuals to put their code and trust that Apache will take care of it according to the Apache way. And safety basically means that as a contributor, any code that you contribute to Apache will give you a legal shield if in case there's some conflict that somebody claims that you stole that code. We will protect you. And similarly, downstream users of Apache software are safe in knowing that Apache knows where every line of code came from. So we, we make a big effort to understand the provenance where code came from. So we don't have this issue of, well, it's my code. No, it's my code. Well, if it's Apache and there's an issue, we'll resolve it and either get rid of the code because it wasn't properly donated, or we will we'll, um, validate that you're allowed to use it. These are just some charts showing the evolution of, of Apache over time. The lower right-hand corner, the download activity, shows a real burst of activity from China um, is occurring. And we're very excited to see all the activity that's coming out of the, the uh, Chinese internet. Um, a lot of activity there, second only to the US in terms of, uh, of activity. So. Um, China and development in China, open source in China, is becoming a very big thing. 
So this is a, a, a short list of the sponsors that make Apache uh, possible. And if you're looking to donate or to buy some products, here's a good, a good list to, to start from. So finally, I'll explain a little bit about how you become an Apache project. Um, why do projects come to Apache? One is corporate citizenship. Makes corporations feel good to be donating code for the public good. Maybe that's a, um, a, a, big, um, a big factor, maybe not so big. But um, certainly higher quality. If you have one team from one company working on a project, and then you say, well, how can we get more testing? How can we get more user experience? How can we get more eyes on the code? You make it open source, and now everybody can see what's going on, and they can contribute to the project quality. Um, if you have a project that you think is important, but you're not sure that you can develop it all by yourself, either as an individual or as a corporation. We get a lot of code donated from, from corporations. It's, it can be easier to work with competitors on a collaboration instead of fighting over everything. So there, there may be part of your code that, that is, is suitable for making open source, and then you have some extra code that defines your company's um, extra sauce, secret sauce, if you will that's your competitive advantage. There's also the opportunity for what we call free training. And free training is people will look at the, at, at the, uh, the project, they may develop materials for it, um, they will at least answer questions. And some, some of the question and answer is um, archive, and you may look at it as a frequently asked question. So if you have a question about something, you can get the answer from the mailing list. And we've already talked about legal protection for both contributors and for downstream users of the, of the project. So the <coughs> Apache Incubator is the official way that code comes into Apache and communities are adopted by, uh, by Apache. Um, mentorship is an important part of this. A mentor in Apache is someone who's been around for a while and can help the community grow inside of Apache. And here's a brief list. You saw this earlier. And let's see, I think we may have. Yeah, we've missed the same two. But here's the, uh, the Tuini is the, uh, is the new project for blockchain. And uh, next time you see this slide, it'll be different. There'll be some projects taken off because they graduated into full-fledged uh, projects and will um, constantly add new ones to it. So the Apache Incubator you can consider to be a bridge between your project and your project as an Apache project. That's the idea of crossing the bridge. So the few things that you have to do in the incubator is learn the Apache way that is self-government, grow the community, make sure you know where every line of code came from with a license to, um, to guarantee that, that whoever contributed it actually has the legal right to contribute, and then finally release. We do a, a lot of work on releases because if the software isn't released, what good is it? It's just sitting in a repository somewhere. So we believe that um, useful software has to be released. So the incubation process takes somewhere between one to two years. It could be as little as three or four months if a project is already operating according to the Apache way. It may be a very brief time in the incubator and then out again. Um, the objective is to graduate to a top level project after you've demonstrated that you can govern the project. And I have to point out that not every project in the incubator is going to graduate. It just, it just isn't. Some projects come in thinking that um, they're going to be able to learn the Apache way. Some of them end up recognizing that they're just not suitable 
either the project is too small or the government of the project is inappropriate for the way Apache wants to work. We've had a, a few of those cases. Um, most of the time, if a project doesn't graduate, it's because it never built enough of a community. It's too small, and it's just too small to be an Apache project. So that brings me to community building. Some of the important aspects of building a community is to be nice to people. I don't have to tell this audience that, but um, there are some people I would like to tell. Be nice. You know, you don't you don't earn any credits for uh, telling people that they're that they have stupid ideas. So be nice. Everybody has has the right to um, express their opinion. So people have points of view. They should be expressed, and um, you should trust that people have the best intentions. So sometimes, especially in, in mixed language environments, you can say something that sounds like you're criticizing or sounds like you're really making a big fuss over something. And so assume that the person who said that really intended to be nice. And then we'll all get along a, a lot better. Um, the last thing is humility. You know, we're all smart here, that's why we're here, and um, yet we don't know everything. So we have to recognize that other people have ideas, sometimes those ideas are better than our ideas. And that's kind of hard sometimes if you're an engineer who knows everything. This is probably the most difficult thing to get done in the incubator, is licensing. Provenance is the process of establishing where every line of code in your project came from. Who wrote it? When did they write it? Do they have the ability to donate that piece of code to Apache? And when I say donate, it's license. Um, it's somewhat of a, of a um, minor point, but when you write code and put it into Apache, you still own that code. You wrote it, you own it. Now, some people have employers paying you to work for Apache, and that, that employer needs to also agree that the code that you write can be licensed to Apache. And there's a separate license agreement for those kinds of contributions. Trademarks is basically your, those little logos over there, those represent trademarks. And Apache is a trademark. Nobody on the internet can say, I'm an Apache project, unless they actually are an Apache project. And we take these trademarks very seriously. So if you see a project on the internet that says, I'm an Apache project, they really are an Apache project. And if you discover somehow that they're not, then let us know and we'll tell them to stop doing that. Because we, we take this very seriously. Software grants are the way a company typically donates code to Apache to be used. And that's a lot of legal stuff. Um, contributor licenses, the, the thing that, that you as a, an individual contributor would need to know is that you sign a document saying that you are licensing your code to Apache, not donating it, you don't transfer ownership, you just allow Apache to use it. That's a very important distinction. So the Apache license itself, um, we're now operating on Apache license version 2.0. That Apache license is 15 years old, so it's a very un well understood license. It's been looked at by thousands of lawyers. I don't know, maybe hundreds of thousands of lawyers have looked at this license and said, that's a great license. <clears throat> so it's a very pragmatic license also. Um, universal donor means that, that you can accept an Apache project into your own project, no matter what kind of license you want to use. We only require that you acknowledge that you're using an Apache project. Um, and it's free for commercial and non-commercial use. We don't distinguish, we don't really care 
what you do with it. And it's very compatible with a large number of other open source licenses. And just briefly, licensing allows an Apache project to use components from outside the organization as long as they are compatible license. I'll just mention MIT and the two and three clause BSD are perfectly fine. There are some um, restrictions on the list, the category B lists. Um, mostly it's that you can't include the source code, but you can depend on it as a, a runtime artifact. And then category X are to stay away from those. Release distributions is probably one of the most difficult things to do because this is an act of the foundation. The foundation stands behind releases, and so they really need to be very good and satisfy all of the requirements. Um, one minor note, the code doesn't need to work. Now you may be shocked. Doesn't need to work, what good is it? Well, um, I recommend that as soon as you come into the incubator, the first thing you do is make a release. To demonstrate that you know how to make a release, even though the release doesn't work, has lots of bugs, lots of issues, but just get that code out there. And distributions are, are required to be authorized by a project management committee. This is part of the legal, legal government. Uh, governance of a project. And releases in detail, um, they have a license and notice file. If you look at a GitHub repository, you will find license and notice files, typically at the very top level of the project. And the license tells you what licenses are used. Notice um, gives you a list of legally required notices, such as the one that Apache says you have to acknowledge that the source came from Apache. Binary releases like Maven repository releases, um, things like Docker, Docker images, those are binary releases because they don't require a build process in order to use them. And then finally, if you've succeeded in doing all these things, you're allowed to graduate as a top level project and you can call yourself an Apache project without any, any uh, disclaimer that you're still incubating. And all you need to do, all you need to do, is to demonstrate that you know how to govern yourself, because quite frankly, the nine member board can't look at everything that you're doing. You've got to be able to manage yourself. You need to be able to make a release, and you've got your legal framework organized, and as a result of this, you're allowed to make a press release. So good for you. Um, and with that, I will just leave you with, if you're looking at, well, how can, a, how can Apache afford to give software away? Where's the money come from to do this? And the money comes from sponsors. Sponsorship is a very important part of what makes Apache work. We don't expect anything but money from sponsors. In fact, we don't want anything but money from sponsors, but that, um, that sponsorship makes it possible for Apache to do what we do. So I hope you um, will take note and uh, find an Apache project that you like, and maybe it'll become an Apache project that you love. Thank you very much. <laughs>